I'd like to start off the acute care surgery review with the evaluation and management of traumatic pneumothorax, Western Trauma Association Critical Decisions Algorithm. I'm going to go through a quick review of the paper. It's published September 16th, 2021 in the Journal of Trauma and Acute Care Surgery. We recognize that there may be variability in decision-making, local resources, institutional consensus, and patient-specific factors that may require deviation from the algorithm presented. Chest trauma is common, and historically, all traumatic pneumothoraces were treated with a chest tube. Now, CT scanners have increased sensitivity for detecting pneumothorax, and the addition of small bore chest tubes has led to differences in how pneumothoraces are treated. This algorithm is meant to select for, with greater accuracy those patients who require chest tubes or who may be observed safely avoiding the additive morbidity of a chest tube. An avert pneumothorax is one that is noted on an x-ray, whereas an occult pneumothorax is not seen on x-ray but can be identified on CT scan or ultrasound of the chest. Here's some pictures of a chest x-ray with a pneumothorax. On the left side of the screen, you can see a clear demarcation with loss of lung markings. On the right side of the screen, you can see a deep sulcus sign on the patient's left. These are considered overt pneumothoraces. A pneumothorax is defined by ultrasound, primarily by the loss of pleural sliding with M-mode patterns and several additional secondary ultrasound findings, such as comet tails, lung point, etc., that support the diagnosis. This is a quick review of ultrasound findings. The left is an ultrasound picture of the bat sign. This is a normal sign. The ribs create the shadows that apparently represent the wings, and the hyperechoic pleural interface represents the body. B lines or comet tails artifacts are seen originating from the bright white hyperechoic pleural line extending vertically to the edge of the screen. B lines move in synchrony with the sliding pleura and a normal well aerated lung. And this is a classic seashore sign. The lung moves creating a granular pattern representing the sand while the layers of pleura and subcutaneous tissue planes represent non-moving areas and therefore weak waves. Lack of the seashore signs and persistent waves would be a sign of pneumothorax such as on the right side of the screen. This is called a stratosphere sign or may be described as having a barcode appearance. Observing pneumothorax has been studied. Barrios et al. observed 59 occult pneumothoraces and 86% were treated successfully without a tube thoracostomy. They had an 80% success rate on those patients with positive pressure ventilation. Methods have been devised to measure the size of a pneumothorax and help direct treatment. In 2019, Edine et al. tested the 35 mm roll in 257 patients with either blunt and pentrain traumatic pneumothoraces as a cutoff for observation. Again, they found the cutoff had a 90.8% uh, positive predictive value to predict successful observation, and that a pneumothorax of 35 millimeters or less was an independent predictor of successful observation for both blunt and pentrain trauma. This intro leads us to the actual algorithm. After a pneumothorax has been identified, rather occult or overt, the patient's hemodynamic status must be evaluated. Taken directly from the paper, a persistent tachycardia greater than 120 beats per minute, tachypnea greater than 30 respirations, systolic blood pressure less than 90, and a base deficit greater than 4. There's basically little debate that the patient's unstable and would benefit from intervention. Often it is unclear whether the physiologic instability is a direct result from the pneumothorax, and in these circumstances it is safer to treat the pneumothorax with a drain. However, in those with a small, that is a less than 1 centimeter, uh, on chest x-ray or less than 10 millimeters on CT scan, the impact of pneumothorax on the patient's physiology is likely ne negligible. If the patient is unstable, then they recommend treatment. Treatment consists of one dose of pre-procedural antibiotics as it decreases the risk of pneumonia and empyema. Do not let the lack of a pre-procedural antibiotic delay treatment in an unstable patient, but should be given as soon as possible. They recommend a finger through thoracostomy in emergency situations as opposed to a needle thoracostomy, as a needle thoracostomy has variable results. Place the chest tube as soon as it is available. Smallest caliper chest tube on hand should be used. However, it is recommended that a thick walled tube is used rather than a small caliber, thin walled argyle tube. This limits the degree of kinking and twisting associated with smaller diameter tubes. If there is a significant component of hemothorax, one may consider a larger 20 French chest tube. If the patient is stable, then the size of the pneumothorax det determines treatment. If the pneumothorax is greater than 35 millimeters or greater than 20% on chest x-ray, 
some correlate this with a greater than two centimeters from the chest wall. Then they recommend treatment with a small bore chest tube. If the pneumothorax is less than 35 millimeters or 20% volume, then it's safe to observe, recognizing that approximately 10% of these patients will fail observation. The presence of positive pressure ventilation does not affect the management. They recommend a follow-up chest x-ray in six hours for those who are observed. They do state that patients in low resource situations or who require prolonged transport times or those who are unable to be monitored closely, that is a patient, for example, being prone for many hours for a spine fixation surgery, should we should consider chest tubes placed prophylactically in these situations. There are knowledge and research gaps that the paper identifies, such as how do you determine if the pneumothorax is the factor affecting the patient's physiology in a likely polytrauma patient versus other factors? Should a penetrating or blunt pneumothorax be treated differently? Most studies point to preoperative antibiotic use, but how long should antibiotics be used for chest tube placement? Most studies find no benefit beyond 24 hours, but would a single dose suffice? And further, how to measure pneumothorax better or the difference in small bore tubes? This concludes the review of Western Trauma Association's critical decisions algorithm. Every patient is different and is not uncommon to deviate from the algorithm. Thank you.